be patient, you know, understand that it's new faces, new system, the team, you know, getting them more acclimated with guys' this tendencies and, uh, you know, what guys do well, what they don't do so well. And uh, Justin, the coach, you know, this is, this is his first year and staff as well, getting acclimated to them and, uh, you know, kind of what they expect out of us on a daily um, in practice and in the games. So uh, we, we show great signs and we've shown it in preseason of, you know, different lineups, certain situations. We look really good. Um, there's other, other times where we struggle and, you know, we can we can use some work. So uh, still a work in progress, but, you know, you can see the trajectory. Yeah. Would you say you have a way to show what, what are the areas that come from that first period? Uh, just continuity. I mean, just getting the chemistry down on both ends of the floor, you know, understanding where help's going to be on defense, um, spacing on offense, you know, our roles, um, and all of that, you know, just getting – just getting that acclimated, um, you know, and obviously it's preseason, so we don't have all of our plays. We don't have all of our sets and systems. So, you know, you don't always want to show that in preseason respect, respectively. Um, you know, so now we're kind of diving into more where we're expanding our playbook a little bit more, expanding our concepts more, and they're going to be more obviously, you know, based on team and personnel driven too. So, um, you know, it's, it's just being patient with that. You know, it may – come a lot easier for us you know everything may just start clicking you know but um so far as it's been solid you know but because we have vets we've shown that we can do it you know but it's just getting that consistency too we've heard so many people uh talk about the preseason kind of preseason speech that you gave like that's right casey said he was like shocked what was that like, <laughs> that you to- don't let them gas you <laughs> just like i've never seen that before. yeah i heard spencer i was like martin the king don't, don't let that <laughs> stop like that's that's we're not doing that we're not we're not doing that. Uh, you know, granted, we, we want to try to keep it in, in houses as, as much as possible, but um, I, I kind of gave an acronym to the team. It was ACE. Like, I love cards. And, you know, the ACE is one of the strongest cards in the deck, you know, besides the Jokers and stuff. So, <laughs> uh, but, you know, ACE, you know, ACE, you know, so for me, it was accountability, communication, and efficiency. Um, the E was always tough because everybody likes to throw effort in there, but effort should be a given. You know, that's something that we're paid to do. You know, we shouldn't. I harped on. I was like, Coach Brooks always got on our ass last year, always about effort. Like that shouldn't be a thing. Like we get paid millions of dollars to go out there and play hard, compete hard. Coach West comes out here and reemphasizes the same thing. You know, this is what we do. Enjoy it. You know, um, and then the other two, you know, accountability from one through fifteen. You know, like guys holding me accountable. You know, I'm being able to do the same thing. And then ultimately communication, you know, that's what helps you on the floor um, on both ends and off the floor, you know, developing that camaraderie, uh, you know, getting to know guys. And then uh, even better, everybody, staff included, you know, because everybody's new, everybody's fresh, you know. So um, I think communication be key, you know, moving forward, you know, whether it's how we do certain things off the floor or, you know, what it is, just the day to day things like everything is going to be. Everything is kind of on a microscope in a way. Like we we want to get it perfect. We want to create. We have an opportunity to create our own culture. You know, it's it's what we make it. You know, uh, obviously it's winning. We have to do that, but we create it. We 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 create our environment every single day. Um, we have to live in it. So, um, you know, just those are my three things. I, I wouldn't say it was a crazy speech, but <laughs> I'm appreciative of their words. Hey Brad, uh, it sounds like you're moving in the right direction with your knee. Um, mm-hmm. old, 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 old. How did you hurt it, and, and how are you feeling? Uh, if I really knew how I heard it, I would tell you. I think it happened on the play where they called me for offensive foul on Fournier. Um, we might have bumped knees. I don't necessarily remember. My adrenaline was going, so I got up, kept playing. Then when I got subbed out, he got a little sore, and I looked down. I had a fat knot on on the like bottom of my patella. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll go get it checked out and kind of got stiff on me and swelled up a little bit in the back and, you know, uh, trainers and I would just called it, you know, and just want to take it day by day. X-ray was negative. So it was good. And, uh, day by day, I'm like Wolverine healing wise. So I was good. So I'm, I'm back to normal now. And, uh, you guys have the Raptors up first. Mm-hmm. And of course you played them just a, a few days ago. You had a lot of time in seeing that being defended by Scotty Barnes. Just wondering what your impressions were. It's funny, I'm a huge fan of Scotty Barnes. Um, coming into the draft, watching him in high school, um, he actually went to Mount Bird with Moses Moody, who played on my team too. So I've always watched him, Cade, and all those guys from from afar for a long time. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely a huge fan of his. He's super athletic, 
um, six nine, long. You know, he can really play one through four. That's what a lot of people don't know about him yet. You know, he's very skilled. He's very talented. And the sky's the limit for him. He's in an awesome system over there, you know, where he can learn behind OG, Pascal, you know, jump right along in there with him and really, really be a big impact for them. You know, he's a willing defender, which, you know, I love about him. And he just loves the game. You can see it. He's a young kid, um, you know, literally a kid. And he just he just enjoys the game, and embraces it. And he's going to be a, he's going to be a problem in the future for sure. Um, but their team in a, as a whole, you know, that's that's how Coach Nurse has them, you know. Um, you know that they're going to play hard. They're going to compete no matter who's on the floor, injured or not. Um, you know, Fred's going to be back. We don't know if Pascal is playing, but if he's there, you know, they have size, they have versatility. So we got our hands full. But uh, I love Scotty for sure. And uh, speaking of first round picks, uh, Denny Abdia, anything you've noticed is different from him last year or this year? Denny is, is constantly growing. The game is slowing down for him more and more. Uh, you know, obviously we want to incorporate him more. Um, on both ends of the floor, challenge him more on defense because uh, he has the body, he has the size to be able to guard bigger players and and those versatile three, four guys, you know, who are able to put the ball on the floor, post up, and you know, kind of be those star like roles. You know, we're gonna you know challenge him in that way too. And uh, at the same time, offensively, he's he's having the ball in his hands a little bit more, he's running pick and rolls. Um, I actually got on a little bit today about being more aggressive. So you know, the game's slowing down for him. You know, uh, we need him. I'm happy he's back healthy. You know, he's getting his lungs back too. So uh, it starts Wednesday. So, you know, hopefully he gets off to a good start in the second year. And uh, I'll be there every step of the way pushing him for sure. What would you say the, the defensive communication is right now? Because you got guys like ACP and Cruz are the mm-hmm. best, but mm-hmm. then Dan, Daniel in the back mm-hmm. is a young guy mm-hmm. who has to kind of see everything. Yeah. Uh, it's really getting gaffed to understand that. Like just what you said, the big is usually the quarterback in the whole situation. Guards, where we have our back you know, to the basket. So we don't necessarily hear screen, see him, um, you know, so the big and the back line is usually in the help side are usually the quarterbacks. They're the ones talking. And that's where it comes in the key. It's not just gaff. It's everybody, you know, it could be me on the wing, just talking, yo, picks coming left. And I'm not even in it, but just letting our players know and creating that awareness. And um, when you do that, it lets the opposing team know like, okay, damn, like they're really in tune. They're really locked in. Like, okay, what are we going to do? Um, especially the weak side. When the weak side is really engaged and talking, communicating, it makes it tough for the ball handler. Like, okay, what am I going to do? Where do I go with the ball? Um, so just realizing how important it is. Um, and, I mean, the more we get scored on, we ho- hopefully it, it kind of clicks. You know, it's, you know, we got we to change it, you know, and communicate. So uh, we're drilling it in practice every single day. Um, and I always try to emphasize, like, we can talk off the court. Like, we can do this, be cool, be cordial, but – on the court, it has to be the same. You know, we have to be buddy, buddy, and friendly on the court, just like we are off the court. Uh, and it's a tough thing to do because sometimes you're just so locked into the game. You, you know, it's not necessarily you don't want to talk. It's like, ah, okay, I just want to make sure I'm not doing the wrong thing, per se. So it's kind of getting out of that comfort zone and being a pro about it. Being uh, this is what we all have to do in order to win. This is what will help us propel us to winning. So uh, we got to take it seriously. And if, we're all right. if there's a verbal mistake defensively. If there's a mistake difference, yeah. would you rather it be somebody loud wrong or somebody yes. not saying anything? Early, loud, often. Yeah. But whatever it's called, you have to do it. Regardless if it's the wrong coverage, uh, you know, no matter what it is, you have to respect the call. And I think that's what we preach. That's what Coach does a great job of preaching. Because um, we have a versatile lineup. Sometimes we switch, sometimes we don't, you know. And so he gives us that kind of trust in a way, you know, to be able to make that decision in certain situations. And, you know, if you don't, if we're not on the same page, we may give up a wide open layup, a wide open drive, may both run to the ball, leave a wide open shooter. Uh, so it's communication is key, you know, because teams will, with 2021, the way teams play, the three ball is important and, and creating those advantages are important. So slips and and different, you know, different type of miss at miss directions are always what offenses are, are putting defenses through. So. Brad, um, I don't know if you've seen him yet, but uh, what's it like having Rui back in the building? Uh, seeing Rui last week, uh, leaving from being tested, he looks good. I haven't seen him work out or anything like that, but it was just good to see him. Uh, you know, I'm happy, happy he's back, happy he's back in town, happy he's back working out. We can't wait till he's you know fully back with the team and, and 
back in the building and practicing with us. But it's a great sign. You know, that's always that's always uh, a positive. You know, we're, still, we're we're moving in the right direction. Obviously, it's within his own time and reason. So, you know, we leave it at that. And uh, he knows we, he has a huge support system here in D.C., uh, you know, with the front office, with his teammates. You know, we reach out to him, you know, frequently to check in on him. And, you know, he responds or, you know, he leaves leaves us be. You know, regardless, we let him have his peace and let him have his his time. So this is good. He's back in D.C., but we don't want to wait too long. We want to get him back. All right, Brad, let's take a couple questions from Zoom. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Sorry, I'm just Simon. Uh, Dean asked you a few weeks ago about just kind of how you processed all the change over the summer and stuff. Um, you said you kind of just had to take a few days. What were you doing during those days? Like, were you actively thinking about the roster, getting to know guys? Like, what were you doing? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was uh, a little bit of everything, you know, because you have to, one, sit back and realize who the coach was going to be. That was the, that was the biggest thing. Um, because we didn't have, I mean, once we we um we didn't agree to bring Scotty back, we were kind of vacant for a while, and it was like, okay, what we're we gonna do? And the list start dropping and dropping. It's like, okay, what we're we gonna do? Uh, but you know, I trusted Tommy, trusted Ted, you know, to make the right decision. They obviously went through an in depth like, interview process with a lot of names and a lot of high quality names for the position, and uh, you know, it's just trusting them in this whole thing, um, and then obviously evaluating the team, evaluating having conversations with Russ, having conversations with different guys on the team um, and just kind of gauging where they were, where I thought we could be. Uh, and then eventually having conversations with Wes, you know, when the time came and just kind of seeing his vision for the team, his vision for me, um, you know, how he can help better me and push me too. And uh, all came full circle, but it was a, it was a long summer. It was an adverse summer. I will say for sure. It wasn't, I'd be lying and say if it was an easy, easy one. For sure. Yeah. What's the, Toughest parts, the waiting, and then also you talk about patience. Does that help you kind of prepare for maybe what the season there? Yeah, it was a little bit of everything because, you know, for me, it was I was going to be in USA when all this happened. So it was like I could potentially be in Japan while all this is going on and free agency and, like, I'm going to be a day ahead or potentially and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I was I was a little bit nervous. I was, I was kind of a wreck um, in a way. Uh, but obviously not being able to go kind of, like I said, it was a blessing in disguise. I was able to really focus on things that I needed to this summer and the team being one, uh, being with my family, the other, but um, we were able to really lock in those things and dial them down, uh, you know, to, to figure out where we are today. And, uh, but it was a process for sure. And I have a random one for you. Mm -hmm. I signed as an NFL writer, so this is more of that uh -oh. question. But, um, so Aaron Rodgers over the summer, you know, held out and there was this conversation generated from whether quarterback should have a say kind of like NBA players do and yeah. you're the face of the franchise you have that kind of I don't know, power so to say um, yeah. which is what did you think of that movement or, or what do you what do you think of that that play and should quarterbacks have that's a, that's a tough question to ask me because I'm very Aaron Rodgers biased so <laughs> AR is my guy he's uh he should be the GM, but no, I'm kidding. No, I understand it. I understand from his perspective. Um, and I think in a way they should be granted some type of input. I'm not saying that it should make every decision. I'm not saying that, you know, let's, let's get this guy, let's pay him this. Like, that's not our job. That's not his job. That's, you know, that's why you have a GM president, owner, governor, whatever we call them. Uh, you know, that's why they're in their positions. And, uh, but at the same time, you have a, a franchise guy that you you want to be able to one keep happy keep here and then two surround him with some talent and so I understood his frustrations in that um but I get it I get it kind of both sides like I get it from a, a business side you know in the GMs and uh you know they have a job to do I don't I don't get involved with other guys money and stuff like that so I get it if you know you know the owner's like I don't want to go into the tax I don't want to do this like listen I'm not writing a check. So I'd be damned if I'm sitting here telling him, you know, what to do with his money. So, uh, but I get it. I get it on both sides. You know, you have a quarterback that wants to win and wants to surround himself with some unbelievable talent. Um, and it's, uh, he probably sees it around the league and he's like, okay, well, I need some of that. Let me get some of that. And you get it. It's kind of a copycat league. So guys want that, want some of the same juice and mojo. Yeah, the, the contracts are obviously different in between the sports, yeah. but. 
it's starting to shift to where quarterbacks can have more of a say? I think so. Uh, granted, you know, everybody looks at the NBA as the example for a lot of things. And, you know, we've, it's a lot of, a lot of soldiers who've paved the, paved the way before we did, you know, to get us to this point and, um, you know, to get us to where we have some control, some say so, and some, uh, you know, some input on the decisions we make as a league as a whole. Um, and I think the NFL is starting to do it too. Um, and granted, I don't, I'm not all in on, on that side, but you can gradually see that they're they want to take some type of control back. And granted, it has to be it has to be a, a working relationship. It's like a marriage. You know, you gotta it's gonna be some some ups and downs, but you know, you come together for the common ground and common good. So, uh, I think I think more and more frequently you'll see you'll see more input from quarterbacks. But obviously, those those organizations hold the key. So. Mm -hmm. I think we're good for Zoom now. A um, couple questions. One question, please, uh, Christos. Hey, Brad, how are you? My man, I ain't talked to you in a long time. Christos, how you yeah. doing, baby? I'm fine. How about you? I'm good, thank you. What uh, What do you like most about uh, this this season, Wizards, and what is the ceiling of that group from your perspective? I think we have a high ceiling. Uh, obviously, I think when we get guys back healthy, get TB back, uh, get Rui back in here, get him back acclimated. Uh, you know, I think we'll be really, really good. You know, I think obviously we want to make it to the playoffs. We want to have home court. You know, those are goals for us, but for everybody in the league, obviously. Uh, but I think we could be that caliber team. Um, obviously, we're not there yet. We still have a lot of work to put in, and um, we still got to develop our, our continuity um, on the floor. But we have it. You know, you can see the spurts that we, we do it in, and um, you know, certain lineups that we that coach decides to put out there are, are very successful, and uh, we're figuring it out. You know, it's, it's not going to be an overnight, you know, success type story. You know, we're we're going to be we're going to grind it out for sure. Thank you, mm -hmm. It's good to be. Yo, uh, how good do you think Daniel Gafford can be defensively? I think a lot of times we talk about him as a lob threat and all the crazy stuff that he does, but defensively, how what do you think his ceiling is per se? And what do you like or think he can work on moving forward this season? Uh, he's a special talent, you know. Uh, I'm, you know, me, I'm always going to shoot, tell guys to, you know, go be defensive player of the year, go be all defensive team. Like, I think he has those attributes. You know, he's still young, he's still learning the game and it's slowing down for him, but he has that athleticism and that versatility to be able to guard pretty much everybody and make it difficult, especially at the rim. You know, his his rim protection is is up there with some of the best in the league. You know, he's he's not afraid to jump. He's not afraid to get dunked on. If that happens, it happens because he's going to dunk on you on the other end. But he has the mentality that, you know, he wants to get the stop. He wants to get the rebound. And, and that's awesome to have. And that's what we need from him. And his ceiling is whatever he wants it to be, honestly, because he has the talent. And he's young, he's athletic, he's gifted, he's a willing learner. Um, and I love that, you know, he kind of holds, he's almost like me in a lot of ways. He Nobody can criticize him more than he does himself. You know, he puts a lot of pressure on himself um, to do well, to be better, to get better. And especially this offseason, you can see the work that he put in and, and just his development. So the sky's the limit for him for sure, Q. I think he can be one of the better defenders in our league. How special was it for you to watch uh, that Sean Taylor um, number retired yesterday and just kind of like that experience being at FedEx yesterday for that game? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, for one, it was it was unbelievable for the family. Uh, one to be the third, what, third or fourth person to be retired um, in Washington football history. Like, that's, that's crazy. Because uh, I know there's a lot of great players that played through here and that probably deserve to be up there. Uh, but what he exemplified in his, you know, short career was, was, I mean, he was, he was a head buster. Like, that's what I call him. Like he, he's out there looking to take your helmet off and you just knew that and the legacy he left, the impact he left on so many guys and then so many fans and, you know, in the, in the stadium yesterday with the 21 jersey on was just, it was just crazy, you know, um, it's gone too soon for sure. You know, he, he was special young talent and uh you know the city loved them the team loved them and it was big what the organization did for them yesterday for sure appreciate you yeah. last question to neil and see what happens 
Hey, Brad, you've been working with Alex uh, pregame. You know, obviously that's a different transition for you this year. Um, how has that relationship grown for you guys and how is he pushing you? Alex has been great. Uh, me and Alex have, have had a great relationship ever since he got here. Um, but we just never really, he was never really my kind of workout guy. Uh, I do the same stuff. Like he, he puts in a little mix of, you know, some stuff that he has, but I, I do my same workout routine before and after practice and uh, before games too. And he, he just jumps in and, uh, and throws a few things in here and there, but for the most part, it's, it's easy going. It's a smooth transition. You know, Alex is a, Alex is a good friend of mine for one or two. He's a, he's a great coach. Um, one I respect for sure. Just what did you, you know, you were obviously here uh, past the trade deadline last season, but there's been a lot of change even since then. Mm -hmm. As you guys begin another season, what do you, have you made of all the turnover kind of just and the way things are starting to click or progress you guys? Uh, you talking about with the team? Mm -hmm. um, really just, you know, day in, day out, we come in and we work. Um, just working on building chemistry, working on building relationships. You know, it's a whole, it's a lot of new things that are here that a lot of people aren't used to. You know, it's a lot of new coaches, it's a whole nother staff. Um, so, it, I mean, it takes time to get used to that, but everything is starting to click. Everything is starting to fall into place like we want it to. I mean, it's day in, day out, we just taking it one day at a time, just trying to be better as a team in general and be ready for the season. Daniel, last season, and I feel like you talked about how a lot in college you mm -hmm. were Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing that I really just locked in with was just my confidence in general. You know, just really just having the confidence that I needed to be able to withstand, you know, NBA game and just take the shots that I want to take, you know, that I'm comfortable with taking. The confidence was just like the main focus, especially like, you know, you can work on a thousand, you can work and take a thousand shots a day, you can make those and you can dribble a thousand times a day, you can do all other kind of drills, and anything, but really confidence to me is the main key. You know, just going out and just know you're going to make this out of just know, you know, anything you take, anything like that is going to go in. That's the main, that was my main focus, really what? just taking the time with that. Mm -hmm. How did you kind of get to that place? Did someone have to say to you, like, dude, you know if you, you could do this? Like, mm -hmm. you just believe, or did you get there by yourself? Um, really just, like I said, just taking a step back and really just focusing on, like, the mental aspect of it. Like I said, you know, repeti I always say one thing for sure is, like, repetition is key too but I mean once you I say once you come to yourself and just try to figure out the things that you need to do to be able to you know take that step into the player or the character or any type of person that you want to be it's always mental for sure you know confidence was really a big thing for me and that's what I really wanted to work on so just seeing the times that you know I always used to watch film and just seeing the times that I had a chance to take that shot you know if I'm ever in that position again just thinking about it over and over again I'm always going to take that shot from now on. I guess in a similar vein, is there anything that you worked on in the off season that you saw in the preseason, kind of the work starting to pay off for you? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, as you can see, the last game I took a jump shot and made it. So <laughs> that's something that has been rare just throughout my career in general. You know, people always tell me to shoot. People always tell me to attack the basket or anything like that. So I mean, I finally, you know, rubbed that dirt off, took, you know, took the edge off and just actually stepped into like the player that I want to be and just actually took the shot, you know. It, time and time again, I've felt like that, you know, it would be a bad shot if I were to take it because I felt like I'm doing something to let the team down. But at the end of the day, if it goes in, I'm helping the team. So why not take the shot? It's a 50-50 chance. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And it went in. <laughs> uh, what, do you, what stands out to you about this matchup with the Raptors as you guys look at the game um, really just being back in Toronto because last year, you know, we had to go to um, Tampa to play them. So just being back in that atmosphere and stuff now, I'm, I'm just really just happy for them because they're back in their home city. You know, that's the main thing. But just being back, and I know the energy is going to be crazy. It's going to be a season opener at home for them. So I know the energy is going to be through the roof. Just main thing is, is coming in and playing off that. Yeah, I just wonder what, it, what it's been like, what your evolution has been like as the defensive quarterback mm -hmm. and seeing things and calling them out. And just, is it second nature to you now? And even if, you're wrong. Does loud Trump wrong sometimes? Uh, I would say loud does Trump wrong. 
every now and then. You know, it doesn't work 100% of the time. But um, just, you know, the schemes and stuff that we have implemented it, like, throughout, you know, just like our defense for sure has really um, helped me out a lot. You know, it was rough at first, still trying to learn, you know, most of the calls, still trying to learn, you know, where to be at during the scheme, how to be up into the ball, if the corner was filled, how low I need to be, certain things like that. We implemented a drop into our defense, too, and just taking the time to really just focus and learn when and where to be on the floor for defense for me is just really just my main thing because I want to protect home as much as I can. Sometimes I'll be in a position to where I can't really just go help and block shots. You know, I have to guard the perimeter, too. So just certain things like that those are the things that have really just stood out to me and helped me be able to work on being able to guard multiple positions i would say and from the verbal standpoint you're talking about mm -hmm. much as anything just kind of like tyson chandler became like the best ever at it mm -hmm. um, and just kind of like how do you how do you grow in that spe in that part of your game as well really just be as loud as i possibly can to be honest, make sure my teammates hear me whenever I'm, you know, behind them because they can't see behind their head all the time. You know, just being that guy that sees the floor and sees everything that's going on behind them, especially if somebody's on the ball or if it's going to be like an off-ball screen or anything, making sure I see ball and man. Um, I was just wondering after Houston and Atlanta, you know, you Yeah, MSG is going to be MSG. You know, it's always electric playing in an arena like that. You know, the fans are always going to come in and show the love to the teams that they've always showed love to throughout, you know, their lives. Um, just being back in an atmosphere with a lot of fans in the arena is just great for me because I missed it. You know, a whole year without fans, that's depressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, it, it, was, it, was, it was just a real good thing, you know, just having the fans back because I'm pretty sure they missed being in the arenas as well. You know, even though, even at one point when it was just like at 50% capacity, still wasn't the same. So now, you know, just taking this extra step and getting everybody back into the arenas, it's going to be great this year. I can't wait for it. Hey, Daniel, as far as gaining confidence in your jump shot, is this just a matter of repetition that you put in over the summer, or did you kind of break down your shot mechanics or anything like that? Um, really just repetition, to be honest. You know, repetition, I would say, helps gain confidence. That's like in one point um, that I had made, you know, you can do, you can shoot as much as you want, do all that stuff. But repetition does, I would say, help at some point. You can always take a step back off the court and just really just think on when you should take a shot, how you should take it, and when you shouldn't. But um, just really just repetition for sure for me was one main thing that helped me with my confidence for sure because seeing it just go in time and time again and doing the things that I've worked on that helped me make the ball go through the hoop I mean you know sky's the limit thank you mm -hmm. all right Daniel we're going to shift over to zoom for some questions okay. let's start with Neil hey Daniel building off of DA's question a little bit how hard is it just to consistently throughout a game always be vocal and you know not let one play go off and you know then it ends up costing you guys a bucket? Um, really, it's it's tough when it comes to fatigue because that's when you have to dig deeper. I would say. You know, you could be short of breath sometimes when it comes to fatigue. You might miss a call from time to time. Um, really, what I just try to do if I ever miss a call is make up to, uh, with it physically. You know, um, if I'm out of position or anything like that, you no, know, either I'm going to go foul or I'm going to go block a shot. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Quentin? What's good, Daniel? Uh, we talked the other day about, like, the, the Kevin Garnett comparison. I was talking about, like, the hedging on defense and things like that. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there something that you do um, – when you watch film defensively, like of yourself, like do you watch yourself defensively and try to assess how you can get better on that end or maybe mm -hmm. a player that you try to model your game after or anything like that? Um, The modeling after someone, I don't exactly. You know, I, I take, you know, pointers and stuff from like some of the coaches that are like, show me guys that are good in those certain positions. When I take tips and pointers and stuff to try to implement that in my game defensively but just the main thing I really just watch myself on defense throughout film and try to adjust and make do better the next play either the next play or just really just the next game to be honest those are like my main things just always be better the next time if you mess up the first time and what's more exciting for you as a basketball player 
let's say, uh, catching a lob and dunking on somebody or maybe pinning somebody's shot off the backboard defensively? I don't know. I, I it's a little bit of both for me. <laughs> it's a little bit of both for me. I get excited for both of them. Either one, I'm gonna scream. So. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. No, no doubt. And Christos. Hey, Daniel. How are you? I'm good. Great. What did you learn in this training camp about uh, the team and about your partnership with Bradley and the Um, really, we just got we just have a lot of pieces with this team now. You know, it's a lot of things out on the floor that can take a lot of pressure off the main guys that are on the floor when it comes to just offense and defense in general. You know, um, we got a lot of vocal guys. We got a lot of tenacity. We got a lot of everything, you know. So it's going to be a real good year for us. I mean, I, I can't wait for it. I have a lot of faith in this team. Um, and we're pushing to be in the same position that we were in last year. And also, for you personally, do you feel that you have anything on your shoulder? Or how motivated you are? For this season. Can you repeat that? How motivated you are for this season? Do you feel that you have any chip on your shoulder for to play for Wizards? Um, yeah, for sure. Because I mean, the position that I'm in now, I mean, the sky's the limit for me, and I just want to progress as much as I can throughout the year. Um, but with just the motivation part of it, I'm motivated that we're going to be in the same position that we were in last year, night in, night out. We're going to come out and we're going to play hard with 100% effort and put on a show for the crowd. Wes, has your attention turned from inwards to maybe your actual opponent that's coming up this week yet? A little bit. Uh, I think it's, you know, uh, we've started to gradually talk about Toronto. Uh, we played it once in the preseason, so at least we have, you know, some idea of what we'll, what we'll see up there. Uh, personnel may, might look a little different, you know, get some bodies back, but I still think right now it's, it's shoring up, you know, holes in things that uh, we haven't gotten to yet or making sure there's clarity with uh, what we're trying to do before we turn the page completely. I mean, we still have practice tomorrow, um, a shoot around, you know, on, on game day. So we still have an opportunity to kind of really turn our attention to them. I was going to say, how are you kind of handling that transition? Like, when will guys actually start? Or have they started watching film? Like, okay, here's how we want you to handle this. And remember, you're going to see this guy who was in the seat last week. It'll be more so tomorrow um, than, you know, today was just about us. And did everybody go today? Yes, everyone was good. Um, we had three live segments. Brad participated in, in two of them, so you know, I don't anticipate any issue. What stands out to you about the Raptors as you, as you look ahead? Uh, the pace at which they play. Um, uh, they play fast. Um, they have a lot of versatile guys who can uh, handle, finish, they can spread you out, play downhill, um, and that's you know even saying that that's, that was without Van Fleet and without OG. So you're adding two more extremely talented guys into that mix. Uh, so it's going to be a challenge for sure. Um, you know, you're going to deal with some of the jitters of first first uh, regular season game, uh, playing on the road in a very dominant home crowd environment. Uh, but we have to factor all that in. And we have to worry about us, concentrate on what we're supposed to do. I think our mindset has to be stay in the moment and win each possession. We'll see who ends up guarding Brad. But what do you think about the matchup between him and uh, Scotty Barnes that we saw a little bit of? No, it's, I mean, you know, I think Barnes is, is going to be a really good good player. He's got length, his uh, defensive acumen. Um, you feel like, you know, watching him, that he takes pride in it. I think that's uh, it's, it's really good to see for a young player. But, uh, you know, I think it's, it's a good challenge for Brad. He's going to make life difficult for him. we got to find ways to, to get him open, to, to screen him. Um, and then we also have to understand, you know, what they're trying to take away. They want to try and take away his catch and shoot. You know, you know, send multiple bodies at him. That a lot of teams are going to do that to him. And I know you eased Danny Avdia into the preseason, but now that the preseason's over and you saw him for a few games, just kind of what stood out about his performance in the preseason? Overall, I thought he got better. Um, it wasn't perfect, and I know it's tough because a lot of the offensive stuff was new. Um, we've moved him around, playing some three, some four, so there's a little bit of confusion there with you know some of his spots on offense, but. Um, just the fact that he continued to get better, I think, is the biggest takeaway for me. Um, his conditioning got better, um, his attention to detail, his communication, his understanding. Um, but, you know, it's still a challenge. He's, he's got to continue to grow to uh, earn those minutes. What did you think of, of uh, Brad and Spencer together defensively during preseason? Overall, uh, I thought it was good. I, I, th I think it can be a lot better because uh, both of those guys are big guards, they're, they're strong. 
very physical, and I think they both, you know, this juncture in their career understand personnel, um, so they can make life life hard on, on guys. But but I think just the consistency, that that's where it, it hasn't gotten to at this point. Um, but they have to anchor the defense because a lot of what happens starts at the point of attack. And that's going to be on the perimeter. Defensive dribble penetration has been a problem here for so <laughs> How can they help one another in, in, in that regard and shut people's water off? Well, it's not just on them. You know, a lot of that is it's a five-man coverage. Um, you know, with, with the ability to, for guards to play downhill, some of the rules are, let's say, slanted in the offensive, offensive side's favor. Um, you know, understanding your personnel, being in the gaps, you know, being early to coverage, I think helps a lot of the um, on-ball mistakes. And then obviously not over-helping when you do bring help. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of that as well. And so I, I get guys are trying to help each other, but there's got to be purpose in, in what we're doing. Otherwise, we're really kind of playing, trying to catch our tails. You never catch up. And the ball keeps moving. It really puts you at a deficit. In the end, it's up to them. I mean, honestly, there's a level of accountability. They're both pros, so I think they get it and they understand the value of it, how important that is for us to have success. Um, but we have to still coach them. We gotta, you know, help them schematically. It's like this is what we're, we're trying to do. If it doesn't work, we'll adjust. But you know, they have to hold each other accountable and, and, and realize it's important for us. You guys picked up Joel Ayai yesterday. Uh, what does he bring to the table? Uh, you know, I think he's a he's a versatile player with his size and length, probably more two than one. Um, but he he can defend, you know, so that that's intriguing. Um, he worked out briefly this morning, so it was, it was good to see him on the floor, and I'm, I'm, I'd be eager to see him in live action. Tommy's going for a Gonzaga East, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose he is. Mm-hmm. Switch over to Zoom. We'll start with Quinton. How you doing, Coach? I'm just watching back uh, some of the game, games from preseason. I see a lot of hedge and recovery defense, specifically um, from Daniel Gafford. How good is he at just playing that coverage well? And just what way do you think he can improve in that manner as well moving forward throughout the season? I think for Daniel, the, the biggest thing for him is his overall communication. Whether he's up to touch, whether he's in a drop, whether he's switching, um, just the early talk. I mean, we preach, you know, early, loud, and continuous, and I think that's where sometimes he's a step behind. Um, calls it late. Now there's contact on the screen. The small gets cracked, and that just starts the snowball effect. Um, but getting him to understand, you know, what is my job in this in this situation, communicating that early, so now all the all five guys are on the same page. Um, it, it's he's shown improvement in that area, but I think it's still he's got to take that to another level. Thank you, Coach. Mm-hmm. Neil? Hey, Coach, obviously you played you know, the Raptors a few days ago in preseason. How much do you take away from that, or is it kind of a whole different ball game? Uh, you know, I think you can take something from it. Um, you know, I thought they were really good defensively. Uh, and that's the way they play. They, that's the way they've played in the last several years. Um, they have the ability to, to switch. They've got versatile defenders. They're going to jump the game up, I'm sure. Um, we've all seen them do that. So we have to be prepared for just about anything, whether it's, you know, full court pressure, zone, um, trying to, you know, take Brad out of the uh, offense. It's, uh, it's all on the docket. So, you know, a lot of things we can anticipate, but we have to be ready. And it seems like in preseason so far that you've staggered Brad and Spencer a little bit. Is that something you're doing just to try different things out and that you envision continuing to do in the regular season? I think early in the regular season, I'll, I'll continue to, to do it that way. Um, you know, we have enough depth to, you know, probably withstand, you know, some of those runs. But trying to keep either of those two guys on the floor, I think, would be a great idea. Um, you know, we'll, we'll look at the, you know, the actual minutes logged and see where we stand. But um, it gives us some flexibility. And both guys can play bo- both positions. Um, and I think sometimes making Brad a primary ball handler has been good for us.